episode of CHBC Kids. I'm so excited to see you all here with us today. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, Merrin, 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 stop, 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 wait. Do you know what's going to happen? What? Well, oh, sorry, I nearly poked that sword up your throat. <laughs> oh, oh boy. scary. We know what's going to happen. Well, today is the final night exam. Whoa! Um, that's why you're so excited. Oh, yeah. And do you know what we have to do? That's why I can't I'm decide. I about to ask. Sword or mace? Sword what? or mace? Sword or mace? I don't know. What? Sword or mace? I don't know. Oh, no. What? Oh, too many decisions. Ralph, but, what are they know? for? What, why do you need a sword or a mace? What is your exam? Oh, here, hold my sword. I think I'm going to use my trusty mace. Because the final exam, you have to defeat the dragon. Oh, the dragon. Or is it a dinosaur? What? what? It might be a dinosaur. Either oh. way, what creature? I don't see anything. Well, I'll tell you, it's big, it's blue, and it's scary. And I've got to defeat it. But look at this. Yeah. I've got a trick up my sleeve. What's your trick? Oh, wow, isn't that cool? How cool? I want one of them. All that right. is very cool. All right, dinosaur. Now, I am is... ready for you. Where is it? Oh, my oh. goodness. Oh. Oh. Go, you got this. Oh. Try again. Oh. oh, oh no. Oh, I've lost my helmet. Oh, no. This is impossible. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, help. Oh, Merrin. Oh. Oh, oh no, oh, oh, oh no, oh, I don't think I can do it. Oh, Ralph. that's so sad. It's okay. I think what we need to do is let's, let's keep going. Let's have a listen to Matt and Megan. I think maybe there's like a key in there or a little something in there that's going to show us how you're supposed to defeat this dragon. So before we do that, actually, Let's jump into some worship, because we love worship, and then we're going to work out how to defeat that dragon of yours. Oh, that would be so helpful. Thank you. God made me who I'm meant to be. He loves me just the way I am. God made me who I'm meant to be. His dreams for me are so amazing. And for this simple reason, Watches over me. Whoa, whoa. 
I'm going really well, but I'm a little bit sad, Megan. Oh no, why are you sad? This is the last week of the Go series. Oh my gosh, it is. Oh, now we've, I'm sad too. Well, we've learned so much. We've come so far. Do you know what we really have? I, I can't believe how much we have been learning over these last few weeks. It's been incredible, hasn't it? We've learned all about God's mission, that God yeah. sends us on the mission. Yeah, that was nice. great. And I love the fact too that we were able to learn that God gave us the Holy Spirit. So I'm not going into this mission alone. That's right. He doesn't send us alone. We mm. learned that God is with us mm. on the mission. It's fantastic. I've learned so much. Oh, so have I. In fact, I feel like I'm, you know, going to step out with a new confidence. That's good. You yeah. should do that. That's I'm, good. Yeah. Me too. Oh. I agree. That's a good idea. And I hope you guys at home are going to be able to step out with the same new confidence. You know, it's so exciting because the more we dive into the Bible, the more that we learn, I just, I feel like it just comes to life even mm. more. Yes. Yeah. It's pretty it incredible. Does. And even though this is the end of our Go series, mm. it's not the end of the mission. Is I it, Megan? I know. I'm so excited. You know why? Because... I guess I understand now that we're kind of on mission for our whole life. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's not going to finish next week. Yep. It, it keeps going. And, you know, the mission might change over time, but it's still God's mission. And that's what's exciting. I know. And he invites us to be on that mission with him. It's oh, great. So incredible. But, Matt. Yes. It's Megan. actually okay because we still have today. One more week. One more <gasps> week. One more week. What else? Could we learn? What else could God help us on this mission? Well, I'm so glad you've asked because today is all about learning that mm. I, you, we can help others when we pray. Ah. Oh. Mm -hmm. So our prayer when we pray to God, yep. we can help support others when we pray. Not yep. just prayer for ourselves, but praying for other people. That's right. And in in fact, the passage that we are looking at today shows us how incredibly powerful prayer can be. 
Wow. And mm -hmm. I see you've got your Bible there. I do. So I do. I'm pretty excited to hear the story that we have today from God's Word. Well, uh, let's get into it. If you guys at home don't yet have your Bible, quickly go and grab it because you're not going to want to miss out on this one today. And we're actually going to be looking into the book of Acts, which is in the New Testament of the Bible. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And do you know why it's called the book Acts? Why? Well, it's because it's the things, the acts, that all the disciples did. It's actually called the Acts of the Apostles. And this is one of the Acts of the Apostles. And you know what? We keep on acting in the same way that they acted then. So I love the book of Acts because it talks about all the amazing things the disciples did as they're on this mission with God together. Let's hear what this story is. I'm pretty so excited. True. Whereabouts well, is it, Megan? It's in Acts chapter 12 and we're going to be reading from verses 1 to 17. Now it might seem like a bit of a longer passage today but it's so incredible. Are it, you ready? It is a it's a mission story isn't oh, it? Oh if if I ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> All right here we go. Acts chapter 12 verses 1 to 17. About that time King Herod Ag Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church. He had the apostle James, John's brother, killed with a sword. When Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish people, he also arrested Peter. This took place during the Passover. Mm. Then he imprisoned him, placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers. Oof. That's 12 altogether. Four squads of four soldiers. Actually, it's 16. That's 16 altogether. <laughs> And I imagine these weren't like little small soldiers. They no. were like mm, big soldiers. Mm. Right. Then he imprisoned him, placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers. Herod intended to bring Peter out for public trial after the Passover. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. We're Ooh. going to come back to that because that's bet. incredible. I think that's a key point right there. Mm. That night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep, fastened with two chains between two soldiers. Suddenly, there was a bright light in the cell and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. Wow. The angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said, quick, get up. And the chains fell off his wrists. Amazing. Then... The angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me, the angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel. But all the time he thought it was a vision. <laughs> he didn't realise it was actually happening. They passed the first and second guard posts and came to the iron gate leading to the city. And this opened for them all by itself. Wow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so they passed through and started walking down the street and then the angel suddenly left him. Peter finally came to his senses. It's really true, he said. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. When he realized this, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many were gathered for prayer. Because mm, they were in the prayer meeting, right? They were. From before, yeah. He knocked at the door in the gate and a servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter is standing at the door. You're out of your mind, they said. When she insisted, they decided it must be his angel. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. <laughs> when they finally opened the door and saw him, they were amazed. He motioned for them to quiet down and told them how the Lord had led him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers what happened, he said. And then he went to another place. At dawn, there was a great commotion among the soldiers about I, what had happened to Peter. I can imagine. I know. How incredible. 
Wow. How incredible is that what story? What a story. Oh what my a story. goodness. Now I think I know what you're going to say, Megan. Oh, what? All right then, what am I going to say? I think you're going to say mm -hmm. that the prayer meeting that those disciples had, yep. while Peter was surrounded by four, four, 16 guards, that their prayer changed what happened in the prison. I reckon it did, Matt. I reckon it did. You wow. See, it is wow. <laughs> it is so incredible because you know what? Sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I pray. Yeah. And I feel like it's not doing anything because mm. I can't always see what's going on. But you know what? These people, they were continuing to pray. They didn't pray a little bit and then stop and then hang back and, you know, wait for whatever was going to happen to happen. Yeah. Because the incredible thing is they couldn't actually see Peter in prison. They were in a different place. So because they yeah. couldn't see the results straight away, that didn't stop them from yeah. what it says, earnestly praying. And even Peter who was right there where God was answering the prayer, he thought he was having a dream. He did. He, he didn't thought, believe it himself. He thought, this is a great dream. Imagine this if I oh. really got freed from, from prison. And yeah. then when he was walking down the street, he woke up. He was like, oh, it really, truly happened. It really did. And doesn't it show how incredible it is when we join together, yeah. when we pray without ceasing, without stopping, because we have faith in mm. a God who is incredible. Yeah, yeah. And what a thing for them to be praying, mm. to earnestly pray for their brother Peter who is in prison. Yeah. That was amazing. Such a bold prayer to pray together. And I would love to see you with your family begin to pray together mm. bold prayers for God to do amazing things as we go on his mission together. Because yeah. when we pray, we help others. We do. Now, Matt, Yes. I'm going to ask you a question here, right? Because maybe, you know, you guys at home have experienced this before. Matt, if I'm praying for something mm. and maybe I don't feel that God has, you know, answered that prayer straight away or mm. maybe I don't feel like, you know, like he's answered it the way I wanted him to. Yeah. Does that mean I just like stop praying? Well, no, because see, prayer is all about relationship with God. Mm. And God always hears our prayer. He promises in his word that he will always hear our prayer. That doesn't mean that God gives us what we want mm. from our prayer. So when I was a boy and yeah. young, mm. I really, really wanted God to make me three inches tall, which is about that tall. Like that big. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Like Coming from a short person, <laughs> I don't know why you were praying that. <laughs> well, see, in my mind, it made perfect sense. Okay. I thought to myself, if I could get a glass of water, that would become a swimming pool. Mm. And I really like swimming right. pools. Yeah. I thought if I could get a donut, that would be like the biggest donut in the world. <laughs> and I prayed so earnestly that God would make me three inches tall. But of course, that was silly. Because if I was three inches tall, then I wouldn't have been able to do all the things in life that God has called me to do. Mm, and so true. God answered my prayer. He said, no. Ah. He said, I love your heart, Matthew. But no, you, you shouldn't be three inches tall. That's not what I've made you for. And I think sometimes when we pray, we pray because it's things that we want for ourselves. Mm. And God is a good father. Yeah. He's a good father that knows what is good for us and what's not good for us. But the other thing, sometimes yeah. God, always, uh, God also says, hold on a minute. Ah, so sometimes he doesn't say no, right. but he says wait. Yes, that's right. Yeah that's, yeah, that's starting to make a whole lot more sense to me now. So I guess it's really important for me to remember as well, when we're talking about the power of prayer, mm. is that, you know, the closer I am to God, the more time that I'm spending with him and, yep. and growing in him and growing in my relationship with God, yeah. the more maybe my prayers will be aligned with God's heart. Absolutely. Oh, that Absolutely. makes so much more sense. So much more sense. Yeah. Now I can, I want to tell you a story Ooh, of a I time a that I prayed with another friend of mine mm -hmm. and God answered immediately. Wow. So wait a minute. Sometimes God's answer will be no. Yep. Sometimes God's answer might be 
wait. Yep. And now you're telling me sometimes God's answer is like, yes, but right in that second. Sometimes it's yes, absolutely. Wow, I'd love to hear this story. So just two years ago, mm-hmm. on a Friday night at youth group, I was chatting with one of my youth leaders and he came to me and he shared about his auntie who was very sick. So she had a tumor on her brain and she couldn't speak wow. because the tumor was so big. And so we got together and I said, let's pray right now. Mm -hmm. And so Matt, his name's Matt as well, and I, we prayed for her and we didn't see anything happen. We didn't feel lightning. We didn't hear flashes of sky or anything like that. You mean like the church? Just like the church. We earnestly prayed. And you know what? What? Matt got home that night. Yeah. And his mum let him know that at exactly the same time that we were praying, she woke up. Wow. And she could speak. (laughs) Oh my goodness. And the tumor had gone. Gone? Gone. Wow. It's an amazing story. Now for me, that made my faith explode with enthusiasm and excitement because God had done this wonderful thing and it, it felt like for Matt and I, that it felt like it was connected exactly to our prayer. But it also made me think, what about all the times that I've prayed For people that I don't even know, people that are Mm. on the other side of the world or people who are at school and maybe they don't talk to me, God answers those prayers too. And just because I'm not the one who's there, I'm not the one who was next to the hospital and saw it happen, but I believe that our prayer was a huge part that when I pray, it helps others as well. Do you know what? I'm so glad to hear that because it is such a good reminder for us that we can help others when we pray. It may not always turn out exactly like we want it to, but God is good. God is big and God is powerful. And no matter how old we are, how tall we are, no matter what we like or we don't like, if Mm. we're praying and we're praying after God's own heart, God can do incredible things. Absolutely. This is so exciting because you know what? Given that this is our last week of Go, I think this is such a great reminder and something that we can take, not just, you know, this week or next week, but this is something that we can hold on to for our whole life, Matt. Absolutely. This is the mission that we're called to, to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And along that journey... The, the most amazing thing along that journey is that our relationship with mm. God grows deeper and deeper all along the way. Oh, so incredible. In fact, Matt and I were talking just before we started to get ready for today's episode. And we were talking about the fact how, you know, when we make that choice to be a part of God's family, when we make that choice mm. to make him Lord and Savior of our life, we are on mission for the rest of our life. It doesn't always look the same. You know, it can change as we get older and as we do all kinds of things, but we will remain on God's mission. And that is so incredibly exciting. It is, absolutely. Thank you so much for traveling on this journey on the Go mission with us. And we wanna keep on praying for you and for your family. Why don't you send us a message and let us know, how's it go in your table time, chatting together Mm. around your family to talk about these things of God. We would love to encourage you and to pray for you as together we go on God's mission. Awesome. See you later, guys. Okay, Ralph, do you, did you learn what the key is? Have you figured out how to defeat this dragon? Um, well, yeah, they were, Matt and Megan were talking about um, prayer and mm-hmm. how I can help others. I'm good at protecting. Yeah. Um, but help. They, they were talking about helping others and help. Oh, yeah. Have you worked it out? What is it? Well... I need to ask for help. You do, don't you? Oh, Erin, well, I tell you what. Can you help me? I'd love to help you. Of course I'll help. Oh, well, that'd be good. Because this is the final quest. I'm so ready for it. We got this. Okay, here we go. Bash! (laughs) Oh, bash! Oh, bash! Oh, bash! Oh, come here, you take that dragon! Oh, yeah! Oh, bash it! Oh, God! Whoa! Oh, oh! Aaron, this is hard work! Oh, boy! 
<laughs> oh, but this mace looks very tasty. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Defeated! Oh, yay! Well oh. done, Ralphie. Knights we did it. Knights of the it. Round Table. Knights of the Hill. Oh, boy. Oh, that was you. exhausting. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I think we have definitely learnt a lot about this mission, haven't we? Oh, yes, yeah, so much. I think we are so much more prepared and now you are a fully fledged knight, aren't you? Yes, Sir Ralph of the Hills. Round of applause for Ralph. At your service. Well, the exciting thing is our mission doesn't end here. It keeps going every day that we do things for God and we listen to God and we show kindness to everyone around us. That's God's mission for us. Oh, that is great. It is, isn't it? What an exciting series it was. So much fun. We're so glad you could join us for it. Well, up next, what we're going to do is see again, like last week, if you can spot yourself on the screen if the highlights end with this week's activities. Don't forget to show us some photos because Ralph and I want to see what you've been up to this week. Yeah. But it's so good to see you again. See you next series. See you later. Good night. <laughs> Did you get that? Good night. <laughs> good job, Ralphie. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Just the way I am God made me 
Impossible. 